Boxatex by Kim Smith. Meg was a boxatect. She liked to make things out of boxes. She loved making tiny houses, tall towers, and twisty tunnels. And she made marvelous things no one had ever seen before. Meg was proud of her work. She could make boxes into anything. Meg's mother was proud too. She thought Meg was brilliant and creative. So Meg's mother sent Meg to Maker School where she could be even more brilliant and creative. At Maker School, there were blanketeers, spaghetti techs, tin foilers, and egg cartoners. There was almost any kind of maker you could imagine. But Meg was the class's first box attempt, and that made her feel special. At school, Meg learned all about box architecture. She learned how to make her structures useful, strong, and beautiful. Meg loved everything about Maker School until Simone showed up. Like Meg, Simone was new. She was also brilliant and creative. Worst of all, Simone was a box architect too. And she was already making things Meg had never dreamed of. In class, Simone would point out ways Meg could make her constructions a little straighter, more wind resistant, and less boring. So Meg told Simone she should build things that were less bumpy, sturdier, and much prettier. On the last day of school, the class's annual maker match was held to see who could make the most amazing thing. There was just one rule. You had to work as a team. But Meg didn't want to work with anyone, and neither did Simone. The blanketeers built with blankets and pillows, the spaghetti techs built with pasta and glue, the bakeologists built with cake and frosting, but the box techs were not building at all. They were arguing. I want to make a tree house, Meg said. No, I want to make a ship, Simone insisted. Meg drew a line down the middle of a very large box. I'll take this half, you can have the other. Fine, said Simone. Soon Meg noticed that her tree house wasn't as large as Simone's ship, so she made her side taller and more impressive. When Simone noticed that Meg's tree house was taller than her ship, she made her side higher and more extraordinary. Slowly, Meg and Simone's creation grew bigger and bigger. They both built and built until there wasn't a single box left. And at last, they finished. What is it? asked a classmate. I've never seen anything like it, said another. The teacher said, it looks like it might. Achoo! Crash! Your side was too wobbly, shouted Meg. Your side was too heavy, cried Simone. Oh dear, said the judge. The maker match was not over yet, but most of Meg and Simone's work was ruined. There were only a few parts left that could be saved. If we combine my treehouse with your ship, Meg started, we might be able to make one thing, finished Simone. The box of text decided to call a truce so they could finish the match. Working as a team, Meg and Simone quickly joined the remaining pieces together until they had created something new. At the end of the maker match, the box of text hadn't won first place but they had a different way of making brilliant and creative things, working together. And they each gained a new friend. What should we make next? How about a buoyant bungalow or a motorcycle mansion?